Greetings, I am the lone photographer, which may give some insight as to what I will be reviewing. Yes, model trains and sandwiches. What? They're both equally interesting. But seriously, what I will be reviewing will be the works of famous photographers, how and why they are so influential, as well as my opinion on their works, as to not have an opinion would defeat the purpose of me being a critic. As well as looking at the work of famous photographers, I shall also be discussing the various different genres of photography, from documentary to fashion, to discuss the hows, the whats, and even the whys. As an aside, I also hope to do segments of the how-to with photography, from wildlife to fashion and modelling, as well as how to use a camera fully manually, rather than using the automatic settings, as well as the debate of film versus digital. Enough of this shameless self-promotion, and on with my first review. Now, unlike with movies or comic books, it's difficult to find an artist within the public sphere whose work can be considered so bad it's good, as whether an artist's work is good or bad is entirely subjective and depends on what the artist is trying to convey to the viewer. As such, putting such a label on an artist would be quite debatable. On with the review. Suburbia. Generally not much goes on there outside of TV or a Stephen King novel. Not much of a subject for photography, apart from documentary. Even then you'd be hard pressed to find anything out of the ordinary. With this in mind, when Suburbia is portrayed with something amiss, I find it quite fascinating as it subverts what we would consider normal. The work of Gregory Crudson focuses on just that. Everyday suburbia with something amiss. Though looking at some of his images, things seem relatively ordinary, almost like a documentary snapshot of everyday life in suburban or small town America. However, these photos are far too well framed and too well lit to be documentary. And there are other images which leave you asking, what was that about? And what does it mean? The work of Gregory Crudson falls into the genre of constructed scene photography. What does that mean? Well, it is where photos have been completely planned, posed and lit for the purposes of the image being created. Similar to fashion photography, where the model, lighting and camera angles are all pre-planned. What is quite unique about the work of Gregory Crutzen is that he uses a fully-fledged film crew on location and on sound stages to create these images. The results are stunning and evocative. Despite the subject matter, the images themselves have no real narrative to them, which gives them an open narrative. At a later date I shall go into more detail of the three narrative types in photography. An open narrative is where there is no underlying story, message or reason. The audience is welcome to come up with their own ideas as to the meaning of the image. What makes the work of Gregory Crudson stand out? I think it is because each image has its own story, which is unique to every viewer. Also the grimy and bleak looking scenes provide a nice strong atmosphere, making the photograph seem more dramatic. Then there is the subtle surreal nature to a lot of these images, where the photo is of a seemingly normal scene, yet there is something out of the ordinary and it is a complete mystery as to the reason why. Why I feel drawn to these images is because of their abstract nature, that they feel like being in a dream or dreamlike state. Maybe that's just me, but a lot of these images feel as if the line between normality and abnormality blurs, and after that point anything that would be considered abnormal is normal. Another thing that draws me in is that if you look deeper into the image, you are able to see the finer details, things you would otherwise miss at a glance, and it is finding these finer details which can draw you further into the image. Why go through such trouble and expense, creating images in a documentary format combined with film's dreamlike vision? At an interview, Gregory Crudson stated, I want to construct a perfect world, and I want to try to create this moment that is separate from the chaos of my life and to do so I think I create enormous disorder. The best way to view the works of Gregory Crudson, outside of visiting a gallery of his work, would be to view the books that he has published, showing the various different series of his work. His first book, published in 1995, Hover, depicts suburbia from two different perspectives, from a crane looking down on a suburban scene, and these strange and grotesque sculptures of insects and animals in the undergrowth with a calm and seemingly peaceful suburbia as a backdrop. Much like the rest of his work, you're encouraged to look deeper and find all of the finer details. Twilight, not to be confused with a book series about sparkly vampires, or a lavender unicorn, published in 2003, continues the theme of something mysterious going on in suburbia, depicting with little explanation as to what's going on or why, which is left up to the viewers to find and work out for themselves. His third book, simply titled Gregory Crudson, published in 2005, is a retrospective of all of his best work up until that point, including some work he has yet to publish from his up-and-coming volume, Beneath the Roses. This sort of book would be recommended if you want to get a flavour for the work of Gregory Crudson. 
Fireflies, published in 2007, is something very different entirely. Originally taken back in 1996, while spending some solitary months in a cabin in Massachusetts, the pictures here depict fireflies around dusk. These images are strangely fascinating and abstract. These images also have the same abstract and mysterious feel of the rest of Gregory Crudson's work. Beneath the Roses, also published in 2007, continues Crudson's visions of mysterious moments of seemingly normal individuals involving scenes on a grand scale as well as intimate at the same time, with unusual moments leaving the viewer thinking, what happens next? What happened beforehand? This volume also contains photos showing how these scenes were created, as well as initial sketches. Sanctuary, published in 2010, much like Fireflies, is a different departure from Crudson's usual work. This body of work involves the decaying sets of Rome's legendary film studio, Cine Citra. At a glance, a lot of these photos look like pictures of a lost or deserted city. These photographs give a lonely and desolate feel of what a film set becomes when the cameras stop rolling and the actors are gone. A Lonely Place, published in 2011, this is much like his third book, Gregory Crudson, which depicts all of his best work from all his volumes up until this point, as well as providing insight of Gregory Crudson and the curators of his exhibitions. This volume discusses the subjects which Gregory Crudson depicts. This volume is valuable if you want to study Gregory Crudson's work up until this point in greater detail. In conclusion, the work of Gregory Crudson shows everyday life in suburban and small town America in a unique style, with the everyday mixed with the mysterious provoking the viewers to contemplate what is going on, which is left for them to decide for themselves what the meaning is behind the photos. Does this make Crudson's work not as deep because there is no hidden meaning or message in his work? I don't believe it should be judged on those criteria. What drew me to these images in the first place is the mystery, where the narrative to these images is open to interpretation. Where there are no photos showing what happens before or after, it is left up to the viewers to use our imaginations to find the answers. Which is what I enjoy about open narratives. It is left entirely up to the viewers' interpretation, and there are as many interpretations as there are people. I am the lone photographer, and I am looking for some semblance of a catchphrase.